Lord, Lord. So Lord. I want to just spend some time, uh, good time in this hour talking to you. Let me start with this. Um, the audience heard me say this a couple of days ago. I was actually on the air when the announcement came forth that you were running. So the phone lines at the studio lit up. My personal phone started buzzing like crazy. I checked it during the commercial break. And people kept asking, is it true? Is it true? Is it true? And I said, what? Looked a little further. Uh, and the announcement did come forth that you uh, were running for president. And so I went on the air you know, immediately and said, it is true. Dr. West is running. Uh, and I look forward to having him on the program in a couple of days. And here you are, as promised, uh, live in studio. But the, the first thing I thought, and I've been getting so many text messages and emails and just people reaching out to me, knowing our relationship and friendship and brotherhood over these 30 some years, yes. as you mentioned I take great pride and humility in being regarded, uh, regarded as your mother's third, third son. Third son. That, mean, that's oh, me, that means Lord, a lot to me. Lord, you got Irene, a smiling from the grave. Uh, Irene Bias West. The porch of heaven. Irene Lord, Bias Lord, West. Yes, love her, indeed, love her, love her, love her. Miss her deeply. Um, but uh, the first thing I thought, and others have echoed this in their comments to me, that this seems so off-brand for you. It seems so off-brand for Cornell West. All the years I've known you, 35 years, and those who've known you longer than I have, have always known you to be a towering public intellectual who has not held his tongue, has not held back in his critique of the American empire. So the question I think that we have to start with is how does one who has critiqued the American empire in the way you have now want to be the head of that empire? Yeah, no, that's I'm trying to square these two things. Wonderful, wonderful question to begin with, though, brother, because you see, I begin actually with uh, my own sense of calling. Mm -hmm. You know, I am who I am because somebody loved me and cared for me. I'm the second child of Irene B. West, Clifton L. West. I'm a product of Shiloh Baptist Church. I come out of the greatest tradition of the modern world, which is a black musical tradition of the Gospels of James Cleveland and Aretha Franklin and the genius of a Stevie Wonder and a an Ashford and Simpson and Marvin Gaye, and we ain't even got to John Coltrane and mm. Ella Fitzgerald yet. Now, what is it about that tradition? Well, that comes from a people, a great people, a world historical people who have been hated probably more so than any other people for 400 years mm. and yet taught the world so much about love terrorize people, teach the world so much about freedom for everybody. See, we don't form left versions of the Ku Klux Klan. We produce Harriet Tubman and Martin King. Mm. We traumatize for 400 years. We produce wounded healers. We're dealing with depths of sorrow that language cannot describe. And yet we produce joy spreaders. And Louis Armstrong was just one place to start. What does that mean? That means that you have to be willing to be used for something, for me as a Christian, bigger than bigger than you it's mm -hmm. like you know bill withers use me but add god up in there <laughs> god how you gonna use a crack vessel like cornell west in his short move from womb to tomb mm -hmm. and i would never have conceived that moving toward the white house would do that i've said on many occasions you find me in a crack house before you find me in the white house mm -hmm. Cause there's probably more corruption in the white house than, <laughs> than my brothers and sisters of various colors in the crack house <laughs> they just flying high in the friendly skies in different ways. But what does that mean? It means then that if you feel called to truth and justice, you have to be willing to be in context that you hadn't planned to be in. Mm -hmm. So you and I, all these years, I ain't never talked about running for president. Mm -hmm. Running from the police, yeah. Running for president, <laughs> no. But running for truth and justice, yeah. that's what brought us together 30 some years ago. Mm -hmm. That's Martin King, that's Malcolm X, that's Ella Baker, that's Fannie Lou Hamer, that's A. Philip Randolph, that's Bobby Hutton, mm -hmm. who was shot down by the police two days after Martin King was shot down in April, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we ain't got to Angela Davis yet. Yeah. What a people. What a great tradition. So I decided, I said, hmm, given the low level, given the overwhelming mediocrity of American politics, I want to be a jazz man in politics just like I've been a jazz man in the life of the mind. Mm -hmm. What is jazz? Three elements. Blues. What is blues? Catastrophe, lyrically expressed. Catastrophe, honestly confronted. Catastrophe, artistically transfigured. Mm -hmm. That's strange fruit. Mm -hmm. Transfigure it for us, Billy Holiday. 
Nobody Marathon. loves me but my mama, and she might be jiving too. Transform it, B.B. King. Let us confront catastrophe. Most politicians talk about little problems. Mm -hmm. See, black folk don't have problems. We have catastrophes visited on us. Mm -hmm. Indigenous people's catastrophes visited on us. Working people, catastrophes visited on us. U.S. foreign policy, bombs drop. That's not a problem. That's catastrophe. So you have to begin with the truth. And I always view the black musical tradition as setting the highest standards because they've been the freest of black people among us. Mm -hmm. They ain't laughing when it ain't funny and, and scratching when it don't itch. You got to sing from your heart and soul. Stevie Wonder say, they haven't done nothing. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Second element, swing. What is swing? A different conception of time in the present that authorizes a better future. So we never feel as if we're fatalistic. We caught. There's no way out. Mm. It looks that way through a certain lens, but we got another lens that shatters the cords, shatters the boundaries, shatters the contours. And lo and behold, we got hope because we can see a future way, way down the line that looks like it's impossible. But if you don't try to achieve the impossible, you'll never be able to achieve what might be possible, but you didn't conceive it because you're looking at the impossible, mm. you see. That's precisely what black folk mean. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is within me and everywhere I go, I leave a little heaven behind. That's right. That heaven behind means, mm, I'm tying to something bigger than just this present situation. So, so we're just not talking about music. We're talking about ways of looking at the world through the lens of those friends were known called the wretched mm -hmm. of the earth, earth. The yeah. least of these in 21st chapter of Matthew. And last mm -hmm. but not least is improvisation. Flexible, fluid. You can't be dogmatic. You can't be ossified and petrified. Mm -hmm. You got to be willing to learn and listen. Well, American politics refuses catastrophe. Look at New York right now ecological catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Have we hit that head on? No. Mm -hmm. White supremacy, major catastrophe, slavery, Jim Crow, Jane Crow, mass incarceration, schools that are decrepit, indecent housing, not enough jobs with a living wage. That's not problems. Those are catastrophes visited on precious folk. Same would be true in terms of domestic violence for women. We can go on and on and this vicious attack, attacks on our precious trans folk. Mm -hmm. They made an image of God just like me and you. Gay brothers and lesbian sisters and so forth. You see, oppressed folk around the world. That is the greatest tradition of the modern world. And let us never forget the struggle for black freedom in the American empire has always been the democratic leaven in the American loaf. So that for me to run for the head of the empire if I'm taking that tradition with me, mm -hmm. then I'm going to dismantle that empire in the name of those who I stone call everyday people. But critiquing and pushing that empire from the outside is fundamentally different than critiquing that empire on the inside. I was literally up all night last night thinking about you and preparing for this conversation. And I'm thinking of simple things. And these are simple, as I admit, but you'll take my point. Yes. I can't see Cornell West as president wearing no American flag on his lapel. No, You've never no, done that. No, 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 I don't. But, no, but, no, no. but when you don't do that, they're going to come after you oh, for they, not they, being patriotic. Let them come at me. I Call can't, me I can't, I can't, I'm I can't imagine. I'm a free black man. I ain't going to be wearing no flags and things. I can't, ima oh, I can't no. imagine Cornel West giving his critique of the military industrial complex being the commander in chief. No, brother, when you had that massive transfer of funds from the military industrial complex to, to eliminating poverty, mm -hmm. eliminating houselessness and homelessness, ensuring that every citizen has access to a decent house, quality education. That is part of the massive redistribution of wealth from the top to everyday people. There's been a massive redistribution of wealth from poor and working people to the well-to-do. Mm -hmm. America has nothing against redistribution, only when it goes down to mm -hmm. does America mm -hmm. have a problem of it? So in that sense, you're right. The same prophetic fire, the same commitment to everyday people, the same commitment to poor and working people will have to be manifest now within the halls of power. Mm -hmm. Now that's difficult. Most folk get in the halls of power. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what is it? What, what is our great anthem? Lift every voice to the city. You get 
you fall in love with the wine of the world, mm -hmm. intoxicated with drunk, the drunk with it, yeah, drunk with yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge, but that's a spiritual question. Yeah. That's a spiritual question. You see, when the jazz musicians shifted from the Apollo to Carnegie Hall, they still played the same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. James, are you still going to play Get Up Off That Thing in Carnegie Hall? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the payback? Yes, I am. How come, James? I come from a great tradition and we keep it funky. Speaking of funky, um, if 9-11, I'm, I'm, I'm staying with this military industrial complex. Absolutely. 9-11 happens on your watch. Given who you are as a Christian, I want to come to that in a second. Lewis Baldwin was on this program not long ago. Oh, I want to, Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, yes man. Vanderbilt, Lewis Baldwin. Yes. I want to raise an issue to you about an issue with you that he raised in our conversation. But um, given who you are as a Christian, given who you are as a follower of Dr. King, 9-11 yes. um, happens on your watch. What do you do? Well, the thing is, first you have to comfort those who are suffering. That's always mm -hmm. the first thing. That's true in any situation. It could be in ghettos and hoods and barrios. It, it could be in the West Bank under Israeli occupation that's been vicious. It could be in, in Ukraine right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be those suffering in Russia. I don't allow flags to get in the way of the rich humanity of people. And therefore, first, same when it hits America, you're in, in solidarity with the suffering, right? Mm -hmm. Then you come up with a response that does not reinforce the violence and the terror. Look at what happened in Afghanistan for 20 years, the longest war the United States has ever fought. Mm -hmm. And then after 20 years, freeze $7 billion and 20 million of the 40 million precious brothers and sisters in Afghanistan are near starvation and they can't get food. That's the kind of thing you avoid. Sure. That's the kind of thing you avoid. So you proceed in such a way that you confront the catastrophe. Mm -hmm. You are sensitive and highly compassionate to those who have been victimized. But improvisation, and improvisation is a species of practical wisdom. It's not just a technical skill in music. You have to be able to make practical judgments to make sure you are not contributing more hatred violence tear in the world even though you've been terrorized but that that's a that's a it's a it's a brilliant response but it's philosophical yes. what, the, what the american people are going to want if they drop a bomb on us is revenge no and no i'm, I'm not a revenge driven president so what do you, so what do you do i'm going to educate the american people mm -hmm. and tell them that revenge is not the proper response that's the response of empires who want to be great like Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. I like to be great like Jesus. I like to be great like Fannie Lou Hamer. And somewhere I read he or she is greatest among you will be your servant. Yeah. So you're going to have a very different. See, part of it is you can't just, you can't accommodate yourself to what has been in place. You see what I mean? Thank God that Ron Carter and Mary Lou Williams didn't accommodate themselves to the music in place. Mm -hmm. They had to create their own sound. So it is with politicians. So it is with intellectuals. We can't go into Harvard and Yale and just reproduce the same conceptual schemes. We got something new to give to the world. Mm -hmm. And what we have new in the realm of politics, it really hasn't been manifest because too many of our black politicians, there's a few of them out there who cut against the grain, but too many of them to readily conform and become complacent to what's in place. You have to educate people. You have to exemplify a certain level of commitment to truth and justice that they're not used to mm. because there's so few politicians who actually exemplify what I'm talking about. For black people to have black conversations that benefit black people for the sake of black people.